All right, and welcome you to this edition of EMU Today TV. My name is Mark S. Lee. I'm your host for this particular edition, as I do for all the editions for the last eight seasons. It's hard to believe we've been doing this for eight years. I want to thank you all for your support. What a great, great program we have lined up for you today. And the first one is really exciting, all exciting, but we have always very special guests. My two very special guests uh you're going to enjoy this conversation tremendously because some great news just happened at Eastern Michigan University. A $2 million gift uh, for the Eastern Michigan University Department of Athletics was announced recently on January 23rd. It will support the construction of a new outdoor track and field complex as part of phase two of the championship building plan. And the two individuals who were instrumental in making that happen are here joining us. I'm so pleased to join with me is, is uh, Mr. Dan McClure and Keith Moore, and uh, they were both four-year teammates under our legendary coach, Bob Parks. And a, pro a point of personal privilege, I happened to run track at Eastern Michigan as well. I had the opportunity of running under the legendary coach Parks as well, but I was a high jumper and triple jumper and a relay guy. But these guys far exceeded my expectations. Keith and Dan, thanks for joining me. How you doing? Great. Great, Mark. Super. Great to see Thanks, you. Mark. Thanks for having us. So good to have you both. Well, let's just start with one. Thank you very much. Uh, I can try to see that on behalf of the university, for on behalf of the athletic department, the contributions, the donation, the funds to obviously support the athletic department. Talk to us about that. Talk to us about the, Keith, from your perspective, why that was important to do that. Well, um, Dan, Dan and I had, you know, had the good fortune of meeting in 78. Um, uh, as uh, track and cross country men at uh, Eastern, and we formed a you know friendship and a business relationship uh, from that, and you know, have have always stayed in touch with uh, with Eastern primarily through the track and cross country programs, and uh, we felt it was important to to give back to the university, uh, which meant so much to us, and you know in our formative years. Uh, you know, running under under Coach Parks. Um, you know, I, I both Dan and I received undergraduate and master's degrees from Eastern, uh, and you know, our experiences there we still use you know every day today in in our business careers as as partners at Boston. And, and Dan, talk about your experience and the impact uh, that Coach Parks had on you uh, when you ran track at Eastern Michigan as well. For sure, Mark. And it, again, it was a, it was an honor and a privilege to be on teams with you as well. Um, and, you know, thank God I met Keith Moore when I was at Eastern and we were teammates and then roommates and now and now business partners and both out in California. I would say one of the biggest contributions of Coach Parks was that he created an elite program that was not elitist if you get the distinction. So yes. we're elite athletes, like you and I competed with Mark and Keith and, you know, but you could be a part of that team, even at the modest levels that, that I competed at as, you know, a, perhaps at the all conference level, but never at the uh, all American or all world level, like so many of our athletes did. So there are many elite programs that are elitist and they go with small size teams with, you know, 10, 15, 20 guys. Um, I think we were looking at our team picture from 1978 and, you know, there yes, must be 60, 70 people there. Um, yeah. So I, I think that's a great story. That's a great message because that's what life is about. You didn't have to go to, you know, an Ivy League school or, you know, have uh, the right parents or uh, live in the right part of the country. I mean, if you can produce, then you're in. And that was Coach Parks' philosophy. And, you know, what a great string, an uninterrupted string of summer Olympians from every Olympics yeah. from 1962 today. Um, so I, I think that's that, that that will be his greatest and lasting contribution that he built this juggernaut of a program, but he let normal people like us be a part of it. Absolutely. And for those of you tuning in, there's a picture on the screen right now. That photo was taken, we believe, in 1978 at Bowen Fieldhouse. And you can see all the all the athletes uh, congregating for that group shot and and Coach Parks impacted all of us in some way, shape, or form. And, and Keith, coming back over to you and, and talking about the relationships, even from this photo, uh, I remember as a, uh, as a graduate, as a student there, a student athlete, I kept in touch with Hayes Jones, the legendary Hayes Jones. I believe he's down in Atlanta, Georgia now. 
And Hayes, you know, he tracked my career, my corporate career. He will always reach out to me. And those are the types of relationships that I remember, even as we were track search at Eastern Michigan and see the relationship that you and Dan have forged together. Talk about that impact and why it's so important for you to pass that legacy on to the next generation of tracksters as well as student athletes as well. Yeah, I mean, there's a whole group of us that still uh, from those days in the 70s and 80s, you know, that, that keep in touch, uh, you know, and communicate and talk about events and and of course, track and field and and Eastern, uh, you know, and when Eastern comes out uh, to the Mount Sac relays uh, with, uh, you know, Coach Parks' daughter, Sue Parks, who's, you know, carried on the legacy amazingly well uh, as coach, uh, both of the men's and women's team. Uh, you know, we always try and get together uh, for those uh, when they come out here as well. So those relationships are, you know, just founded in, I think, you know, the blood, sweat and tears, uh, you know, running track and cross country in those formative years and, you know, just grinding out the miles and, and all the work. And you really, you know, develop lifelong bonds and you know to to us today to dan and myself you know they're still very very important uh in our personal and professional lives and, and to clarify for those who may not be aware hayes jones excuse me ran track at eastern michigan eventually won a gold medal as well as dan referenced earlier we had a string of gold medalists and olympic, you know, olympic guys going to the olympics over the years i was not one of them but uh, just to be uh, in the presence of these two in terms of greatness and others, it's truly an honor for me to be involved in this conversation. And, and before we segue, because I want to ask you about your business as well, but I remember the days of, of running at Brian Nearson Stadium, uh, and, and the track was so hard. And I remember running the days at Bowen Fieldhouse, and some days I literally would end up, and we used to call it a whirlpool in those days. And, and my knees were just aching, and I had shin splints. And, and I remember getting out of the tub and trying to walk and, and I think the monies that you uh, are certainly donating to the athletic program is going to go to helping to recreate and redo the outdoor track at Rynearson Stadium, also known as the factory. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. And, you know, there's, there's also a football element involved here because we're going to have a separate dedicated facility only for track. And there were two other people that contributed to make this happen. Phil Incarnati, who is a emeritus yes. member of the Board of Regents, but importantly, Max Crosby, who's probably one of the best defensive players in the NFL, our legendary uh, defensive end. And, you know, Max one day jokingly said, that looks like a high school stadium with a track running around it. We need to get that thing out of there. And we said, Max, if, if you want to get it out of there, you need to pay. And, and, and eventually Max said, you know what, I'm going to do that. So Max, you know, seven-figure check, uh, was one of the catalysts in making this happen. And and the track stadium will have its rightful place. It'll be used for a lot of other things from youth all the way through high school and college invitationals, conference championships and beyond. Um, but we think that's uh, absolutely phenomenal that we're going to have a, a custom and dedicated facility for track. You know, and what makes me continue to be proud of our institution is, is in addition to you, we've had other alums, alumni, have made donations. I mean, T.J. Lane, I think, right, from the, uh, playing the NFL, contributed back to the uh, football team, and it good to see the track team getting support from you both as well. You know, Keith, coming over to you, talk briefly about the impact that that you want this, this donation to have on our student-athletes moving forward, both professionally as well as from a student perspective as well. Yeah, and it's really uh, impressive to see how the university has changed over the years from the late 70s. And, you know, I remember uh, pounding it out on the Bowen track, and you're right, uh, that track was, you know, as hard as cement. And, yeah. you know, the the heater blower was at one end, so you'd get blasted by the heater on one end and, you know, freeze at the other end. But uh, it's really great to see, you know, just the overall uh, enhancement to the university, including the athletic facilities and uh, as Dan mentioned you know Max Max's uh, donation and his impetus you know to have a football dedicated stadium really was kind of behind us that's okay let's 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 do something for track let's get a dedicated uh, <clears throat> excuse me dedicated track uh, where you know the, the 
runners don't have to worry about someone crossing going to football practice or or whatever and it can be used as dan mentioned you know not only for the university but you know everything from youth to high school which is important you know to continue the legacy of you know eastern michigan track and field and cross country for sure but also that of the united states as well yeah and and you know dan i want to come back over to you i want to segue briefly into the business you guys referenced it earlier your business partners as well talk to us about the business and, and what do you do so we're in investment banking um which is the business of raising money for companies that we primarily list on stock exchanges in initial public offerings or ipos and Keith and I have segued from being the underwriters of those events, so raising the capital, to being the investors in those companies as well. Um, so we're both investors and investment bankers. And there are so many crossovers from you know, what we're doing in our former athletic lives and now in our business lives that are interesting. I was, I was just in New York, and I got to go to the Milrose Games probably one of the most mm -hmm. important indoor track meets that there are in the world. Uh, and I got to see Earl Jones there, who was an Eastern grad that won the bronze medal in 1984 in the 800 meters. And of course, Hayes Jones' his name came up, who won bronze in 60 and gold in 64. Uh, and Earl was just met with, you know, a long line of well-wishers, you know, congratulating him on what he had done all those years ago. But somewhere in there, there's an Eastern Michigan. So what I do is I put track meets on my calendar and then I schedule business events around them instead of the opposite. So a lot of people yes. business events on the calendar and then they, oh, there's a track meet going. No, I put the track meets there first and people say, what are you doing in New York? Who are you meeting with? Some, you know, mega titan of private equity or IPOs? No, actually, I'm, I'm going to this track meet. And they're like, whoa, oh, okay. But yeah, I'm also meeting with those other people too. So um, it really guides and directs um, a lot of the things that we do. We've become business partners with people who are involved in track in other parts of the world. It's a differentiator. We know and they know and have an appreciation for the hard work, the effort, the persistence, et cetera. Um, so it's caused us to build a company under Keith's guidance, leadership, and, and initial founding to about 100 people worldwide. That is awesome. And, and Keith, we have about a minute or so remaining. I want to give you the final word. Anything you want to say? Excuse me. As we wrap up. When it comes to Coach Parks, his lasting impression on you as a person as well. Yeah, I mean, from the very first time he started to recruit me in high school, um, you know, to all the way through my senior year, he was just such an influence on my life. His, you know, his pot positive motivation, uh, his work ethic, uh, you know, his uh, integrity and honesty. Uh, you know, it was just, just, it was fantastic to be around somebody like that. And of course, as Dan mentioned, at the very beginning, you know, he, he took in everybody and, you know, I was uh class C, a good class C runner. And when I got to Eastern, you know, there was just some amazing runners, you know, class A state champions, you know, that went on to be NCAA champions. And, but he took us all and, you know, made everybody better. And I think that's why his teams, you know, ultimately were, were, were so successful is because he knew that, you know, some guys were superstars coming out of high school, but he could grow some guys into being superstars. And uh, and he was really good at that. So that hard work and ethic, uh, you know, applies uh, to to Dan and myself today in the business. We we love what we do and we work extremely hard at it. Well, you see, it's got me all choked up just reminiscing. <laughs> and uh, it's so awesome to have both uh, Keith Moore and Dan McClory make a financial contribution of $2 million dollars. On behalf of the Athletic Department of Shore University and all alumni, we are very proud of you. We thank you for your contribution and your ongoing support uh, for Eastern Michigan University. We appreciate you both. Thank you very much for joining me. Thank you, Mark. Thanks, yeah. Mark. Yeah, you're very welcome. And so as we wrap up, we're going to go ahead and talk about a brief, or we'll show you a brief video from the MLK days that just took place on the campus of Eastern Michigan University, I had the opportunity of attending. It was awesome. It was a great experience. I think over 500 people attended this wonderful luncheon. Take a look. and we come back, we'll continue the conversation.
All right, welcome back to the Eden Mutual Day TV. I hope you enjoyed that video, brief video. Great things are happening here on campus. And as you can see, we continue to grow and expand. And with no exception, we're going to continue the conversation with a very important conversation about our Honors College. And I'm so pleased to have with me uh, the Dean of the Honors College joining us. Uh, that's uh, Ann Eisenberg. And uh, Dean Eisenberg, thank you very much for joining me. How are you? Good. Thank you very much for having me on the show today. I'm excited about the opportunity to share a little bit about what we're doing in the Honors College. Well, yes, let's start right here. Talk about the Honors College. I think people hear the name Honors College and something comes to mind. Not everybody is sure what comes to mind. Give us right. a brief overview of the Honors College. The Honors College is provides an opportunity for some of the most talented and motivated students at Eastern uh, to get a little bit more out of their education. All of our students in the Honors College uh, belong to two colleges, the college that their major is in and the Honors College. So they get the resources of both uh, whatever the college provides in what their major is, as well as the resources that they can have in Honors. You know, so you know, even when I was a student way back in the day at EMU, and I heard this idea of the Honors College, the, the idea to me, the perception was everybody had some type of honor, right? Mm -hmm. That's the name Honors College. And uh, kind of kind of gives a little bit more information exactly what are the benefits of joining the Honors College, sure. if you will. Mm -hmm. So the benefits, I think, for students are the chance to get a little more personalized experience at the university. Uh, they have the students in the Honors College have the opportunity to be part of a community of scholars, uh, to have the support from both other students who share their commitment to getting the most out of their education, to being serious scholars, uh, to also have access to faculty and faculty relationships that get, help them get more out of their education. Uh, one of the things that Honors provides to students is advising. Now, students, of course, all students have advising at the institution. There are advising centers in every college. One advantage that you get if you're in Honors is you have two places that you can look to to get advising. Uh, and what we augment, obviously, is most of our students would like to graduate with Honors with a distinction that's going to show up on their resume and on their transcript. Um, and uh, so we advise students about what they need to do to graduate with honors. Uh, but we'll also advise them on what they need to do um, or what they can do to be even more successful. So we do a lot of professional advising um, and uh, postgraduate advising. We help to prepare students for whatever their next step is going to be. Uh, we ask students to become involved in leadership activities, to cultural activities, um, and then we provide and service opportunities, and we provide those to them. Uh, we ask them to connect with the community, and these are all ways that they can get more 
um, you know, a, a broader and a richer experience at Eastern, but then we help to facilitate some of those things. So we want to encourage students more to go study abroad. We really, one of our mm. strong values is that uh, the best students at the institution should be taking advantage of, of the opportunities Eastern provides to become involved in research. Uh, so we do a lot of promotion of research, facilitating relationships between students and faculty so that they can access research, and then really to take the research to the next level, to uh, engage in research that they're going to present at the symposium, that they're going to present at research conferences across the U.S. And if you get your paper accepted at the Biomedical Research Society, then we help to fund your travel to that conference. Um, so we're providing students, I think, with experiences that will help them get more out of uh, EMU. And then there's fun, you know? So when, well, well, when you talk about, we'll come back to the fun in one second, I just want to clarify one thing. You made an interesting comment, and that was uh, graduating with honors. Right. And and that, you know, that, that in itself sounds very, very impressive. Talk about the benefits of graduating with honors and how that can help you as you graduate from the university, as you're seeking job opportunities and, and post-graduate uh, work as well. Yeah, I think, I mean, obviously when you're seeking uh, admission to postgraduate work, the kind of thing a student has to do is something extra to distinguish themselves. So they have the opportunity to say, I graduated with university on honors or departmental honors or highest honors. We have different pathways depending on different students' interests and needs. So one of the things graduating with honors is, is a point of pride for students. I think yeah. a lot of students want to be able to say, I did something more. I wasn't just like everybody else. I did something extra. Um, and then they get the extra um, a, a ceremony as well. So they get to participate in two commencement ceremonies. Uh, but a lot of it is I do think, you know, we do obviously get a lot of students who are interested in graduate school, um, who are interested in getting into medical school. Um, and all you have you have to always think about when you're you know planning those kinds of postgraduate experience, what am I going to do that's going to set me apart from others? Um, I actually think though that there's a lot of value in the kinds of things we're asking students to do in honors research, for example. I think a lot of students know, okay, I should do research to get into medical school. I should do research to get into a top law school. I should do research for grad school. They don't recognize always the value of having done research for someone who's going out immediately into the workforce. A very common question that interviewers ask students is, tell me about a time you had to plan a project for yourself and set your own deadlines. Tell me what you did and how you worked your way through it. And students who participated in research have a ready set answer. And I've had students in computer science come back and tell me in engineering how valuable it was to do the extra project because that was really something they could talk about really being individualized. I set my own goals and here's how I accomplished them. Another place is education. You know, it, I mean, you're interviewing for a teaching job and to be able to say, uh, I decided I wanted to build this extra curriculum, or I decided I wanted to build this web resource for teachers or for parents. Those are things that really distinguish you um, as a student and really help with that, not just getting into grad school, but help with getting a job um, because you've got to be different. You've got to have more than other than the other people competing for the same job. Well, I want to come back because I cut you off a little bit earlier, but you mentioned fun. Talk about the fun. Oh, the fun part. Yes. You know, the idea too in honors is that um, it's valuable to students to find or facilitate a way for them to meet other people who share their values and their interests. Um, and honors does that by building a community. We have our own living and learning community. Students on our campus live together. If they're honors, they don't have to, but if they choose to, they live together in Downing Hall. It means they know that the people that they're living with support their goals. Um, and the one thing I always tell students is um, that the one thing you know is going to happen in honors housing is if you have an organic 
chemistry exam the next day and the people next door are playing music loud, you know that they're not going to be offended if you go and tell them, could you please turn their music down, your music down? Because the next time it's going to be their exam. Um, and there's that respect for the need to study. Um, one student said to me, one thing that you, you know, that um, you often don't realize is, you know, sometimes all the students are going off and having fun and you have to study. The nice thing about living in an honors dorm is there's always somebody else who has to study too. And so at least you have somebody that you can yeah. study with. You never feel like you're the only one staying in at night in order to study. Um, we tell students too, it means the people in your class are living right there and you've got your study group right there ready to go. Helps for commuters too, to connect with other honors students through uh, coming in and using our commuter lounge or coming to some of the more social and fun events that we support for students. How challenging, so again, when I hear honors, uh, <laughs> honors college, I think it's probably extraordinarily challenging to get into the program how or the college, how challenging is it to get into the college? What are some of the things that you're looking for as you admit these students into the honors college? Okay, so when we admit, we do have an automatic admit process for students um, who um, have done very well in high school. So they, you know, have a 3.5 GPA or um, and their test scores are high. So 1200 SAT or 25 ACT. Um, I, um, ha though my career started as a developmental psychologist, and I have a philosophy that different people develop at different rates. And there are people in high school who, for whatever reason, did not do well. So we have a second entry point, students who come in and do well in their first semester at Eastern or their first year are welcome to uh, then apply to join the community and every year I take a chance on a student. We have a holistic admit student. You tell me why you think your honors, even though perhaps your high school GPA was not that strong. Um, and I'll tell you, you know, that's, that a lot of being honors is believing that you could be. Um, there are a lot of students who once they're paying for their education, they did not pay for high school. And so they did not care. But once they're paying, their attitude changes completely, or it changes because now you get to do in college what you want and not the same thing that the school tells you you're supposed to do. Um, and then for some students, they've just been slowly maturing and realizing that, you know, that they have a passion for learning that they didn't realize they have, that maybe they didn't have when they started high school. And I'll tell you, when I've taken a chance on a student because they say, I really want to try this, they've never disappointed me. We have about a minute remaining. I want to give you a chance to talk about some of the accomplishments you're most proud of that the students have certainly exhibited in the Honors College. I mean, I'm, I'm always super proud when so many of the, when you look at the symposium and the, such a high percentage of honor students, but there are also some national accomplishments. Um, last year, we had two Fulbright scholars. They are spending this year abroad, um, one in Germany and one in Spain. Um, we've had um, in the last two years two Goldwater Scholars. It's a national scholarship. The top 400 or so STEM students across the country, um, and thus far, you know, each year we've had a Goldwater Scholar, and we think we'll continue to have that kind of success um, because part of what we try to do is propel students. We have students participating in summer programs in public policy. Every year, the Kennedy School of Government at Harvard invites students from across the country uh, to come for a leadership institute, and we have routinely sent students to those. It's making sure students know what the opportunities are um, and then working with them so that they can put their best foot forward. Um, and that's what we try wow. to do for students. Eastern that students is, do anything. I got to tell you, that, that, this is awesome to hear. I can tell the enthusiasm in your voice and, and through your interactions. You are very proud of this college. We are very proud of the Honors College. I want to congratulate you for all the great work that you're doing in providing leadership and direction for our students. Congratulations and job well done. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. A, you know, a chance to invite student people to kind of learn more about us. All your viewers are welcome to do that. And by the way, is there a website? That people can go yes, to. of course. Um, www.emish um, slash honors. And you can learn all about, you know, what we offer and what the requirements are and, um, you know, um, what our students are doing as well. A lot of well, stuff. That, 
that website's at the bottom of the screen. I want to thank uh, Dr. Ann Eisen Eisenberg, the Dean of the Honors College. Again, go to the website, get more information, an awesome college to be a part of. And I want to thank you all for joining me for this edition of EMU Today TV. We will check you out next month as the academic year continues to progress very quickly. We should go out making a great day, making a great weekend. We will check you out next month on EMU Today TV.